us can heal all our sins and diseases.
I want to see the young adults dancing and praising God. There's no God like Jehovah. There is no God. There's no God like Jehovah. seats and I trust you're excited to honor God with your substance. Amen. I'm just seeing if I want to change what I wanted to do. Yes. Let's go to Psalms 126 verse 6 in the Passion Translation and welcome to every person that is online on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, why don't you go ahead and share the broadcast and invite someone to watch tonight's service. And if you're on uh, YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to Leon de Prayer as well. And um, sure, the scripture thing is a bit uh, not working. Let's go to my Bible. It's a lot better. Are you ready to give, church? Yeah. I want you to understand that one of the principles of honor, you know that honor is due to God, amen? amen? That God is a jealous God. I think maybe before we go there, let's put Matthew 6 verse 33 up. Just in the New King James Version. We're just training the media team. I just need help with speed, prophetic speed. Oh, Pastor David. Saving the day there. So it says there, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Say this with me. Say tonight, It is my desire and my choice to put God first in everything. It is my heart's desire to honor Him with my life, to honor Him with my work, to honor Him with my service, and to honor Him with my substance. In Jesus Christ's name. Church, when you do that, you will be first in everything. Because the Bible says that what you sow, you shall reap. Amen. Can I hear your amen? When you say amen, you say, I believe it, I receive it, it is mine. We serve a jealous God. He is second place to no one. He is equal to no one. Mm. When you put God first, you will be lifted up. Now let's go to Psalms 126 verse 6 in the Passion Translation. I was going to do a different message on honor. Um, but I really like that song. Because people need the joy. Not just the, the joy when you're blessed. It is the joy of the Lord which comes from your salvation. And I remember the day that I got saved, all I wanted to do was give something to God. And I think I told Krugersdorp this morning, what do you give to God when He has given His only Son? as a price tag to purchase you and I by His blood. Even Pastor David and I were discussing salvation and a lot of people have these nice salvation prayers. Yet the man on the cross next to Jesus, all he said was, remember me. 
Now we want to tell people, if you don't say the prayer like this or like that, you're not really saved. I believe if you can get saved in the street, you can get saved in any church. If you will believe and confess with your mouth. Jesus Christ is Lord and Lord of all. Amen, church. But now watch this when it comes to giving. Because you've said, I put God first. The thing is, we we give to God when we are blessed. And sometimes when it's not going so well, we choose not to give to God. And that's okay if you feel that way. But I want to encourage you with the scripture and what the word says, when we, even when we give out of situations like that, when we honor Him, that despite our circumstances, despite what we are going through, whether I am blessed or not, if I'm a child of God, I am blessed. Amen. Say, I'm blessed. Amen. So it says here, they may weep as they go out carrying their seed to sow. In another translation, it says, precious seed. Say, my seed, my seed. is precious. So you need to see it as precious because the Bible says that He gives seed to the sower. So when I think, oh, this is all that I have. Let me not just give to God to make Him happy. I told you this morning, it requires revelation. So I know I'm not just sowing something. I am giving Him precious seed. Jesus Christ, the first fruit, was precious seed. It was so precious that it reaped you and I. Do you receive that revelation? Because that is what is inside of you. Because a, a seed will give birth after its very nature. Amen. So it says there that they will return with joyful laughter. Can I hear your joy, church? Yeah. And shouting with gladness as they bring back arm loads of blessing and a harvest overflowing. Now go to Luke 6 verse 38. I think let's do NIV. See, everything about God is more and more an overflow. Everything in God is a life of overflow. That is why Jesus came to bring you life and life more abundantly. So it says, give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Just like the book of Psalms. It is a harvest overflowing. It is the abundant life. People want to know why they don't experience an abundant life or why the more they receive, the more it runs out in holes. It's like there's always debt, debt and debt and debt. The book of Haggai and the book of Psalms says it's because we don't put God first. It says because we decided not to build the house of God. So even says that the little offering that you brought for me and placed it on the altar, I've blown it away. Why? He doesn't want your seed. He wants your heart. Every time we give from a place of revelation by grace, it comes from the heart. Amen. That is what God gave us. So it says here, shaken together, running over, will be poured into your lap. For the measure you use will be measured back to you. It is right that a person that gives from revelation and a love for God to expect a harvest. Many people are very humble and say, no, I just want to give this to God. God is like, what do you need? Oh, no, 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 I, I, I don't need anything. It's like the woman that built an upper room. And the prophet asked his disciple, what does this woman need? But before that, because he, she touched his heart, he wanted to find out what does she need. And his disciples said to him, I know she needs a child. So the man goes there, prophesies to her, and it says, a year next, this time next year, you will have a child. But it runs so deep what she did because she touched the hearts of God that even when he was sick and about to die, or die, that he had to raise him from the dead. 
Why? Unless the seed falls down to the ground and dies, it cannot experience resurrection power. If we as believers will understand the power of a seed that comes from the heart, you will live and you will not die. You cannot. Every single one of you, when you tap into this revelation of the heart of God, man, there will be no limit to what you can do. It's not about the amount. It's about, is it touching God's heart? Does this bring Him honor? Does your life bring Him honor? Does your service bring Him honor? Amen. We underestimate the power of our hearts. That is why it is the only thing that God wants is your heart. It's not because it's deceitfully wicked. It's because it is God's. Amen. Are you ready to give church? You can all stand to your feet and you'll see in the chair in front of you is your sewing envelope. And there's also all the giving details at the back. You can also go to encounterchurch.co.za for those that is online to give online. And um, we also have Zappa, Snapscan, Cash App and Venmo. Those that are watching internationally, you can also go ahead and use PayPal and DonorBox, which is all on the website. But if you're ready to give, I want you to lift up your sewing envelope, your cell phone, your contact points. You can also make your way to the back to give by card and those that are watching live I just want you to stand and stretch your hand to the screen as we pray together so Father I thank you for this house where you have found a place that there's meat in your house where you have found a people that are in love with your word and the person of Jesus Christ Father as we give we declare that is you and you alone that paid the sacrifice of your son, Jesus Christ, so that we could receive eternal life. And Father, I thank you that the slate has been wiped clean, that we are free to give and honor you, and we are free of condemnation. We are free of every limitation. We are free of every spirit of poverty, that Father, you delight in the prosperity of your servants, and we come before you as your willing and obedient servants. And that every offering that touches this altar will come up before you as a sweet smelling aroma. So as your word declares that as we try you now in this, may every single person be received as an open heaven for the glory of God. And may you pour every single one of them out as a blessing that there's not enough room to receive it. That when people see them and behold them, that they would see the favor of God upon their lives and that it would bring great joy and thanksgiving to you in Jesus Christ's name. And everybody said, Amen. Church, you're welcome to come to the front and give and then you can make your way to the back to give by card. And then all the details is on the screen for you to give via our website. God bless you as you give, church. As you know, we receive a second offering, which is towards the vision fund and the advancement of Encounter Church. I'm not going to elaborate too much about that, but you can go on to encounterchurch.co.za and um, you can see there what is the vision about. And you can also go to leondeprea.com under the partner section and uh, you can partner with us on a monthly basis or you can give as you feel led into the vision fund and they're going to send it around and uh, you're blessed to give and then you can make your way to the back to give by card or using the details that are on the screen you are my god you are much here in your presence lord i am saved when i am weak you are my strength god you are with me I will not fear, cause you 
church thank you to all those that have given let's all stand to our feet as we worship the king of kings tonight encounter pastor david said something so powerful in announcements that we serve the only god that raised himself up again so in this evening as we're going to worship may he be so real and tangible to you as you close your eyes lift up your hands may you feel the manifest presence may his holy spirit dwell in you and in this evening, may you touch the heart of God through your worship.
the veil fell before you. You silenced the post of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory. For you are raised to life again. You have no circumstances right now and the breakthrough that you need in this atmosphere because we are singing this bridge death could not hold you the veil till before you which means anything is possible for God no matter how your situation looks right now what breakthrough it is that you need anything is possible so many times we sing a song just because we're singing it but death could not hold him the veil tore before him he silenced the devil through the power of the cross of Jesus Christ. And by the power of the cross of Jesus Christ, we are free in this night and we've got access to His presence. So when we sing this song, when you sing this speech one more time, I want you to prophesy over those dry bones. I want you to speak life into every area because Jesus Christ is alive. Oh, because death could not hold Him in the grave, even this night, come on. And death could not hold you. The veils all before you. Your sign is the ghost of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring. The praise of your glory. For you are raised to life. You have no rival. You have no rival. You have no equal.
night God there's only one earth to describe that's beautiful church you sing to me and only one word comes to me there's only one there's only
like wine for you to drink, like water from my heart. I pour my love on you, praise. If praise is like the field, I lavish mine on you. So every drop is gone. I pour my
moment just raise your hands to heaven. Father we welcome your presence in this night. We celebrate your presence. It is an honor. It is a privilege to stand in your manifest presence in this night. We do not take it lightly. We do not take it for granted. Say so they say Father take my heart make it new let my heart connect with your heart may my heart become your heart father touch me in this night release your presence afresh upon me release your fire afresh upon me in this night lord i am hungry for more of you See my hunger in this night. I present myself a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto you. Father, take all of me. I give you all that I am. I give you all that I have. I surrender to you. I yield to you. I submit to you. Open my heart in this night to receive everything that you have for me enlighten the eyes of my understanding that i may understand your word that i may understand your truth and have the ability by your holy spirit to walk in your truth and to demonstrate your truth father i pray this in the living name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I love you. I worship you. I give you all the glory, all of the honor, and all of the praise. In the living name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Come on, let's just give God a praise of you. Amen, amen, thank you. And God, you may be seated. Very warm welcome to everyone in our house. Very warm welcome to everyone connecting with us over live stream. It is awesome to be with you once again tonight. I trust that you came with a hunger. I trust that you guys came with an expectation to encounter the Lord through the power and the might of His Word. Amen. I don't know if you can say that I'm hungry for the Word. That should be each and every one of us. Amen. It is good to be with you tonight. I haven't been in Centurion in a while, preaching here in a while, so I'm really excited to be with you tonight. And, um, and I, know, I, know that, I know that you're about to be blessed by the Word. Amen. And I almost, almost went into the offering. Maybe we must can take up another offering. <laughs> Amen. I want to share with you something tonight. And I pray that your hearts will be open to receive it. I can guarantee that the word tonight will like every message being released from this pulpit. How many of you joined the service this morning? Just you raise your hands. Come on, what a word. If you've not been encouraged, lifted up, and changed by the word that was released this morning, then... Um, when is the next freedom encounter? 
<laughs> we'll arrange a special one. <laughs> Amen. Come on, what a word. What a word. If you if if you missed if you've missed the message this morning, I would like to encourage you to get a hold of it. It is still available online. Get a hold of it. Listen to it. I guarantee it will set you up for success. Amen. May your minds tonight be transformed. May your lives be transformed completely by the renewing of your mind. I pray that the Spirit of the living God in this night will step in, that He will take every word being released into the atmosphere and that He will place it upon you like as a mantle and that you will become a manifestation of the words being released in this night. I loosen that and I release it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I want to get right into it. Give me. Give me, give me, give me a few minutes just to get the word out. I'm just going to jump right into it. Amen. Say the voice of the Lord on many waters. Say again, say the voice of the Lord on many waters. Now, put on the screen for me, Genesis. Let's start right in the beginning. I'm going to go through the entire Bible tonight. And uh, I'm just joking. But let's start right in the beginning. The Bible says, and I can feel there's an excitement in the atmosphere. You know, it's, I can really feel that there's been a shift. Something I've shifted. Something I've changed. With... Something I've changed with Centurion. I mean, there's an excitement in the atmosphere. I can feel it. And I can see that when I look at each and every one of you, I can see a hunger for the Word of God. A hunger for more of His presence. Just a hunger for more of Him in my life. Amen. And so I'm very excited to get, I can feel that it's stirring in my spirit. And I can feel that there's many that's pulling it out in this night, which is a good thing. So if, if I go crazy, it's your fault. And um, amen. But, but let's start. Genesis chapter 1 verse 2, King James. And it says, And the earth was without form and one. I'm just going to stand here and just speak like this tonight. <laughs> huh? Amen. And it says, And the earth was without form and void. And we all know this. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Say the face of the waters. Say again, say the face of the waters. I'm going to bolt a concept tonight that I need you to catch. It's not a 0.5 message. It is again one thing flowing into another. One thought flowing into another thought. And I'll need you to stay with me as I go through the message. Because if you miss one part, you might miss where I'm going with the message. Are you guys with me? It's not something that's difficult to catch. You're gonna, I pray that you'll catch it quickly. I, I think by the third or fourth scripture that I'll get into, you'll get where I'm going with it but it's a mindset that I want to change and that I need you to adapt. Are you guys with me? Say, say upon the face of the waters. Now, remember when prophets so many times state that we must read the old covenants with new covenant eyes. Amen. So now spiritually speaking, when we look at this verse, there's a lot locked up in it when we look at it and read it with new covenant eyes. Are you guys with me? It paints the picture of someone. Say the earth was without form and void. So it paints the picture of someone that is still lost in the world. An unbeliever to whom the gospel is being presented to. At that moment, the Holy Spirit will go and rest upon that individual, making the ground ready.
and creation started. In the same way, when you are open to receive the Word of God, light comes in. That is the Lord Jesus Christ, the living words. And that is the moment your spirit becomes, is reborn. And we say that you've now been born again. Are you guys with me? Just bear with me, I'm going somewhere. I'm building a message for you tonight, amen. And I'm building it as I'm standing here. So just, now say with me. The spirit moved upon the face of the waters. Now, when we look at the book of Psalms, Ezekiel, Daniel, even in the book of Revelation, you will find many passages of Scripture that contains verses that will say something along the following line. It will say the voice of the Lord is upon the waters. Or the voice of the Lord is upon many waters. Have you ever read that in Scripture? Have you ever seen it? Or that the voice of the Lord is over the waters. Or that the voice of the Lord sounded like the rushing of many waters. Are you guys with me? And so we can, we can pick up this line of thoughts again when we go. Now we're going to go a bit deeper into the book of Genesis. I thought you are going to go through the Bible. And so we go to the book of Genesis chapter 26. Well-known passage of Scripture where Isaac went and dwelt in the land of Abimelech. And we all know it. And he sowed in that land. And he reaped in the same year a hundred faults. You all remember the story. I mean, we always use it when we receive an offering. And the man began to prosper. And he continued prospering until he became very prosperous to such an extent that Abimelech came and said that, listen, you became too mighty for us. Please leave my place. Please leave my land. And what happened? Isaac got up and he went out. So you guys with me? And so he dug a few wells. Amen. Say the voice of the Lord on many waters. I want you to catch something. And so we pick up the story in Genesis chapter 26, verse 18. Amplified classic. And it says, And Isaac dug again the wells of water. Genesis 26, verse 18. And Isaac dug again the Wells of water, say the wells of water, which had been dug in the days of Abraham his father. For the Philistines had stopped them after the death of Abraham, and he gave them the names by which his father had called them. So Abraham had dug wells in the past, and Abraham gave them some names. And so here Isaac is coming to the same wells, he's opening them up again, and he's renaming these wells according to the names that his father Abraham originally gave them. Amen. And so we go to verse 19, it says, Now Isaac's servants dug in the valley, and found there a well of living water. Say a well of living water. Verse 20. And the herdsmen of Gerar quarreled with Isaac's herdsmen, saying, The water is ours. And he named the well Isaac. It means contention. Say contention. Because they quarreled with him. Verse 21. Then his servants dug another well, and they quarreled over that also. So they named it Sitna, meaning enmity. Say enmity. Are you guys still with me? Okay, so he opened the wells of his father Abraham, two wells specifically. And he renamed them according to the name that his father Abraham originally gave it. But then the people came and they fought over these wells. And so he renamed them again. And the first one he called contention. And the second one he called enmity. So what Isaac in essence is saying is that we are not going to drink quarreled water. We will not partake of water that is of contention or water that is of enmity. Meaning that we are not going to drink water that has a curse on it. I need you guys to stay with me. Are you guys with me? Verse 22. And he moved away from there and dug another well. And for that one they did not quarrel. He named it Rehoboth. Meaning room, it also means peace. It also means joy saying, For now the Lord has made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land. Okay, so now what have we seen so far? We've seen water of contention. We've seen water of enmity. Then we've seen water where there's room being made, meaning water of peace, meaning water of joy. Are you guys with me? And Isaac said that this is the water 
that we will partake of. We will partake of water that is blessed. We will not partake of water that has a curse on it. Are you guys with me? And so we see in Scripture that there is indeed something that is known as cursed water. In fact, when you get to the book of Numbers chapter 5, it also makes mention of cursed water. Then when you get to the book of Numbers chapter 8, verse 9, uh, Numbers chapter 8, Numbers chapter 9 and 10, it speaks about purified, sanctified water. Say sanctified water. Purified water is known as the water of purification. So you can have water that has a curse on it, or you can have water that is blessed. Water that is sanctified. Water that is purified. Now please also bear in mind me saying this, that as a born again believer, who are filled with the Holy Spirit, that you can purify cursed water. I know I see a lot of confused faces. Don't worry. You'll understand now. Hmm? I'm going to say that again. How many of you, let me ask this question. How many of you are filled with the Holy Spirit? How many of you have the mind of Christ? So as a born again believer, filled with the Spirit of the living God, you can purify cursed water. I'm not speaking physically now. Hear me spiritually. Are you guys with me? And so we pick up the story. Can I carry on? Okay. So now we pick up the story when we go to the book of Exodus. Chapter 15, verse 22. King James. Just to give you a little bit of background, this is directly after Israel was delivered from Egypt. They just left Egypt. They just came through the Red Sea and they came to this place called Mara. Are you guys with me? And it says... So Moses brought Israel, you know what, put on for me, put on for me the new King James. Say, wells of living water. Verse 22, and it says, So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea. Then they went out into the wilderness of Shur, and they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. Verse 23, Now when they came to Marah, and they could not drink the waters of Marah, for they were bitter. Therefore, the name of it was called Marah. Verse 24. And the people complained against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? So he cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree. When he cast it into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made a statute and an ordinance for them, and there he tested them. What happened here? Again, reading the Old Testament with new covenant eyes. God was painting a picture of what the finished work of the cross of Calvary would accomplish once for all. He was painting them a picture of the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ. How do I know this is true? First and foremost, it says that God showed him a tree and he said, take that tree and put it in this contaminated, cursed, bitter water. The tree is a representation of the cross. And so what did Jesus Christ come, came and do for us? What did He come to accomplish on the cross of Calvary? It was to bring deliverance, healing and restoration. To bring you out of a place of bitterness, of darkness, where you are caught up in sin, bondage and curse to call you into His marvelous light so that you can have a life of abundance, a life that overflows with rivers of living water. Say, wells of living water. I need you to catch something tonight. You guys with me? And so this tree was cast into the water, the bitter waters, and it was made sweet. Are you guys with me? And then again, just to build how I built this revelation, now you find it's actually plain and simple. Verse 25 again, in the King James, it says, There the Lord made a statute and an ordinance, and there He proved and tested them. Now what is an ordinance? It is a decree. It is an approved approach. That when you follow this approach, 
there will be a definite result. That is an ordinance. So we're saying that I need an ordinance is something that you need to remember. It is a principle. Scripture is full of them. And we many times speak about this principle, that principle, the principles of God, the principles of the kingdom of heaven. It is also known as the ordinances of heaven. And it says that you need to remember these ordinances. Now again, when we speak about remembrance, it immediately takes us to the book of Corinthians where Paul speaks about communion. Even the Lord Jesus Christ Himself having said that this is my body broken for you. Eat of it and as often as you do, do it in remembrance of me. That this cup signifies the new covenant that ratified was ratified by my blood. As you partake of this cup and every time you do it, do it in remembrance of me. So it's painting the picture of something that we need to remember. An ordinance. Are you guys with me? So what was the statute and this ordinance that they were to remember? Verse 26, carry on for me. Go for me to verse 26. And it says, And said, If you diligently hear the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in His sight, give ear to His commandments and keep all His statutes, and I will put none of the diseases on you which I have brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Listen, what is one of the names of God? What is one of the manifestations of God Himself, of the Lord Jesus Christ? Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals. God was painting a picture right there when He said, take this tree and put it in this bitter water and it shall become sweet. It is not the tree who made it sweet, but it's what the tree... I don't know if you're hearing me. He was showing them what the finished work of the cross would accomplish once and for all. That I am the Lord your God who heals you. Now very interesting. How many of you have read through the Bible and you would find many times and many places the word well? I've just given you Isaac Dark Wells and here again and we're going to get now again. Are you guys with me? Now listen to this. I want to show you something. Can I show you something? Go up into verse 27. The next verse. Say the next verse. Okay. So we're just flowing. Amen. Then they came to Elim where there were 12 wells of water and 70 palm trees. So they camped there by the waters. Now very interesting. Now here we find wells again. How many, how many times have you seen the word well through Scripture? Come on, it's, it's all over. Now every time, you can go test this. When you look at the word well in the Hebrew, it is be'er or bor. Every single time, except for year. It is the only place in Scripture where the word well is the Hebrew word ayin, which means I. And they came to a place of 12 wells of water. Again, God is showing them. Listen, Israel, I'm trying to show you who you're dealing with. And I'm trying to show you another future. I'm trying to show you another destination. The Bible is very specific in its wording. 12 wells of water representing the 12 tribes of Israel and 70 palm trees. He's showing that, listen, I've given you an option here. You better watch your way. Ayin means I. And the Bible says this. Oh, can I show you something? Now I need to just quickly go off the notes here. Amen. Put on for me Psalm chapter 32 verse 8. I want to show you this. So this wall represents an eye. 12 walls. Are you guys with me? No. One, two, three. Okay. God is showing them something here. We're speaking about many waters tonight. I'm speaking about many waters tonight. Don't get confused where we're going. I'm speaking about many waters. It will make sense as I go. Don't worry. Amen. 
And God is showing them, listen to my word. Follow my instructions, my statutes. Who is the living word? Who is the living word? Jesus Christ. And He says that I will, if you follow this, I will guide you with my eye. Now we have to determine who is the eye of God. Are you guys with me? Go for me to John chapter 16, verse 13, King James. One, two, three. Okay, so who's the eye of God? The Holy Spirit. So, I don't know if I should say this. If you are filled with the Holy Spirit, it's, listen, 12 volts. That false is the Hebrew word ayin ay. And God is showing them, saying that, listen, I'm giving you two things here, 70 palm trees. How long was Israel in Babylonian captivity? 70 years. If you don't follow this, if you don't follow my word, there's another destination. But I need you to partake of this well, not of this root. He's painting them a picture of what I need you to become Israel. Twelve tribes of Israel. And I need you to become my wells of living water to a dying and broken nation. That where I send you, that that location will become like you. A well of living water. But listen, we're speaking now about a spiritual location here. I hope that you guys are hearing me spiritually. There's a reason why I connected all of this with the eye of God, which is the Spirit of God, and that you are filled with the Spirit of God, which means that you are, I'm not going to say it. You can say it yourself. Huh? Can we carry on? I'm going to, hang on, I'm building this thing. Hmm? So we have to follow the same steps. Amen. In the beginning of creation, can I just quickly backtrack again? Bring up the speed again. So in the beginning of creation, the Holy Spirit hovered over the face of the waters, received light. Amen. Speaking about salvation, you received the Word of God. Light came in, filled with the Holy Spirit. We have to go to the next step where we find the tree being casted into bitter waters. And so you being filled with the Holy Spirit, must go and find bitter waters. And so you need to go make those bitter waters sweet. Because as a born again believer filled with the Holy Spirit, you can turn cursed water into purified water. You can go and make cursed water sanctified water. That is when you now go out and you follow the Great Commission. What is the Great Commission? Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, which means this is a mandate. We have to follow the same process. You have become a vow of living water. that must flow and bring life, deliverance, healing and restoration to the broken hearts, to the captives, so that the blind can see. And then when, are you guys with me? Luke chapter 4 verse 18 when it says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He hath anointed me. That is known as the mandate of the anointing. Every one of you carry a mandate of the anointing. To go preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken hearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. All of that can be summed up in one word, deliverance. Christ came with a mandate and the anointing carried the mandates and the mandate was to bring deliverance, deliverance, 
deliverance, healing, and restoration. It's all is deliverance. Come on now. To go and make bitter water sweet. Are you guys with me? Stay with me. Amen. Are you filled with the fullness of God? Are you filled with the fullness of God? Say, I am filled with the fullness. Do you know what you've just said? I don't think we can really comprehend. Ephesians chapter 3. I want you guys to see something. I've quoted this so many times. Verse 14, New King James. Go with me to verse 19. One, two, three. So I am filled with the fullness of God. That fullness, say it, say that fullness must flow out of me. Say I must become a river of living water. Say I am filled with the fullness of God. I am filled for the fullness of God. Say it until it sinks in. Until you can understand it. Until you can see it. Because when you see it, it's the moment that you will become it. You have been filled with the fullness of God. Do you understand the importance and the mandate that accompanies that very statement? When I say that I'm filled with the fullness of God, it means that it cannot just remain there. There is a commission and there is a commandment. There is a mandate that is connected to the statement, which means that I cannot just be in a place where I become stagnant water. Stagnant, still standing water becomes cursed water contaminated sick water I cannot be that I must continually stir the water let me not jump the gun here let me let me go let me go here let me show you this can I carry on Psalm chapter 42 verse 1 amplified classic And it says, as the heart pants and longs for the water brooks, so I pant and long for you, O God. Verse 2. My inner self. Say my inner, my inner self. Say again, say my inner self. What is that? Your spirit man. Okay? Yes, here in the Old Testament. What? Thirst for God. It's kind of a strange thing to say. Think about it. My spirit man thirsts for you. Amen, says David. For the living God, when shall I come and behold the face of God? Now, verse 7. Roaring deep calls to roaring deep. At what? Listen to this. At the thunder of your water spouts, all your breakers and your rolling waves have gone over me. Now, water here speaks about the voice of God. You guys with me? Remember, I told you, Psalm, Ezekiel, Daniel, Revelation, many times you'll find that the voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The voice of the Lord is upon many waters. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The voice of the Lord sounded like many waters. So when he's speaking here, there's, he's, there's rolling waves that have gone over me, your breakers. He's speaking about the voice of the Lord. Are you, are you guys with me? It is the same as saying that when I heard your voice. And so again, we have the voice of waters. Are you guys with me? Listen, this is a very powerful verse. What is a water spout? I don't know if you've ever studied this. It is a tornado that forms over the water. And then it sucks up the water. Which means that the water now takes on a new form. Some people are with me tonight. Thank God. Amen. The water takes on a new form. It's like when the tree was cast into the bitter water. The water took on a new form. 
it became like the tree. It became sweet. Are you guys with me? Where a water spout goes, it sucks up the water. The water now takes on a new form. It becomes lo- like the water spout. Are you guys with me? Say, I am a water spout. It's deep calling on to deep. It means to wait upon the Lord. Now, prophet, I've spoken on this. What it means to wait upon the Lord. It means to wait upon the Lord. And it is in this waiting that His presence will come in. The anointing will come in like a water spout. And what will it do? It will suck you in and it will lift you up. But listen, there's a reason and a purpose for that happening. It cannot just stop there where you have received that impartation and that activation. As a water spout, you now, because you have taken on a new form, you become like the thing that you've encountered, which means that like that water spout, I must now too go out and suck the bitter waters in so that it can become like me, someone who is filled with the Spirit of the living God. Bible says this in the book of Exodus, chapter 14, verse 24 and 25, and the King James. And it says, And it came to pass that in the morning watch, say in the morning watch, the Lord looked, are you guys bored? Onto the host of the Egyptians, through what? The pillar of fire and of the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians and took off their chariot wheels that they drove them heavily. So that the Egyptians said, let us flee from the face of Israel for the Lord fights for them against the Egyptians. Say pillar of fire. Now Matthew, I want you to get something how you're being changed into the very thing you're encountering. Are you guys with me? Now bear in mind, pillar of fire and a cloud, right? And the Lord looked through Who's the eye of God filled with the Holy Spirit? I'm not saying it, but I'm going to prove it now. So God looked through the pillar of fire, right? Through onto the host of the Egyptians. Okay, put on Matthew chapter 3 verse 11. King James. John the Baptist speaking, saying, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that comes after me is mightier than I, speaking about Jesus Christ. Whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with and with. So what have you then become? A pillar of fire. Do you know what that means? You become a pillar of fire. Which means that where you go, God is looking through you. I need you to catch a... If I can just shift someone's mind in this night, and if you can catch who you are and what you are, it will change everything and how you approach someone in the streets, how you approach the lost, how you walk into your business place, how you even handle your finances. If you can see this thing correct, if you can shift your mindset for a moment, it will change everything. A pillar of fire. That pillar of fire was dangerous. It was not something to be messed with. Are you guys with me? When the Egyptians attacked, this pillar of fire went behind them. Say, God is my rear God. Say again, say, God is my rear God. When the the Egyptians attacked, this pillar of fire lifted, went behind Israel and formed a wall of fire so that they could not be slaughtered. Say, God is my rear God. You have become a pillar of fire and you must be the rear God to a dying and a broken generation where the enemy have sent to be killed, to steal and destroy. God have called you, filled with His Holy Spirit, baptized in His holy fire to be a rear God to a lost and dying broken world. You must be the barrier where the enemy can no longer penetrate or come to and close to those who are lost. That where I will stand in the gap, like when Isaiah said, send me. Here I am, my God. I am available. Send me. And God came and touched His mouth with a fiery coal. May the same thing happen to each and every one of you. May your mouths be touched 
with a fiery call. May a fresh baptism even in this night of holy fire take place. I, I'm speaking about those who used to have a passion and desire for the things of God. And you have lost that passion. You have lost that desire. You know why you've lost that passion? You know why you've lost that desire? It's because someone came with a lie. And you believed a lie. And someone was not a barrier to protect you from it. You're the only Bible that many people will ever read. So know your word. Know who you are in Christ. Know what you carry. And know what it is that you've been commissioned to go and do. It's very simple. Go and make disciples. Go and make disciples. Go and make disciples. Go and make disciples disciples. What does it mean? Christ Jesus saying, go and make others so that they can too look like me. And so Jesus said that I'm sending you because I'm going to the Father. And very truly I tell you that the works I've been doing, you will do also. And in fact, you will do greater things than these because I'm going to the Father. And so I need you to go and make disciples that where you go, that you can make that place, that region and the people of it look like me. Rome was the first to perfect colonization. Now what is colonization? It is where a territory will be taken over, but they will not get rid of its people. They will rather send someone of their own country in there to go make that place the same as where they were sent from. Are you guys with me? So in other words, when Rome would go and they would conquer and take over a territory, they would not get rid of the people. They would send a governor from Rome into that region to go make that place and its people look like Rome. So that when you step into that place, you would think you're in Rome. That is what is upon your life. That where you go as a citizen, ambassadors of Christ, that wherever I go, where my feet touches the ground, Whatever region I walk into, I must transform the atmosphere physically and spiritually and make that location with its people look like the place where I come from. Amen. You guys are doing well. Amen. Can we carry on? Now listen to this. Psalm chapter 63 verse 1. King James. Again David speaking saying, O God, You are my God. Early will I seek You. Again he says, My soul thirsts for You. My flesh longs for You. In a dry and thirsty land where no water is. Okay, now again, what is he talking about? Go with me to verse 2. To see your power and your glory, so as I have seen you in the sanctuary. Now, we need to allow Scripture to interpret Scripture here. Are you guys with me? David is saying that, listen, my soul thirsts after you in a dry land where there is no water. But then he jumps to the very next verse and he's saying that, but I have seen you. I've seen your power and your glory. And he's saying that I've seen it in the sanctuary. Are you guys with me? So now what what, what is happening here? When John was on the island of Patmos and he was taken into the spirits, what did he see? He saw the sanctuary. Are you guys with me? Are you guys with me? He saw the sanctuary of God. And what did he see? He saw a river of life coming out of the throne of God. And that wherever this river went, it brought forth life and it brought forth healing. 
So in essence, what David is saying is that I saw the same sanctuary. The sanctuary that John saw is the one that I saw. Listen, David had many visions of the crucified Christ. I can take you to many Psalms where he spoke of the crucifixion itself. Are you guys with me? And he's saying it in essence, I know that we many times read this thing and we think differently. We think that he went into the temple and it's there where I saw your power in glory. No, he saw a vision. And he's saying that I have seen it before. I have seen your power. I have seen your glory like John. And I saw the rivers of water coming out of the throne of God. I have seen it. And that is what my innermost being is thirsting after. You cannot see that without being spirit. Flesh cannot see that. Only spirit can see that. And he's saying that I've seen it before. I have seen the sanctuary. I have seen the throne of God. And out of the throne of God flows and rivers of life, rivers of living water. And oh my God, my God, I long to see that river. I long to see that river of power and of glory. But not only to that which I've seen, I not only want to see, but I now want to experience it. He's saying that I'm longing for that, that which I have seen, I have encountered in the Spirit, that I can see a physical manifestation has. Are you guys with me? I hope it as well. He might as well just said, when he said, to see your power and your glory, I've, as I've seen in the sanctuary, he might as well just said, as I've seen your rivers of life. You guys with me? Your power and your glory. It's the same thing as your river of life. Your power and your glory is the same as saying your river of life. Can I say that again? I want this to sink in. To see your power, glory. Power, glory is the same as river of life. River of life, power and glory. 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 Hmm? Say river of life. And where this water go, there will be joy. There will be health. There will be multiplication. Are you guys with me? Ezekiel had exactly the same vision of the same sanctuary. Put on for me Ezekiel chapter 47 verse 1. Now what are we doing good? I'm going to speed up now. New King James. And it says, Then he brought me back to the door of the temple. And there was water flowing from under the threshold of the temple towards the east. For the front of the temple faced east. Okay, no, yes, okay, now I need to. Okay, I can't. The water was flowing from under the right side of the temple south of the altar. I would encourage you to go study that. Verse 7, when I returned there along the bank of the river, say the bank of the river, were very many trees. Okay, so by now we know who those trees are. On one side and on another. Then he said to me, this water flows towards the eastern region, goes down into the valley and enters the sea. When it reaches the sea, its waters are healed. And it shall be that every living thing that moves, wherever the river go, will live. There will be a very great multitude of fish because these waters go there for they will be healed and everything will live wherever the river goes. It shall be that fishermen will stand by it from En Gedi to En Eglahim. They will be places for spreading their nets. I hope that you're hearing this spiritually. This is a prophecy over you right now. I'm telling you. Are you guys with me? The fish will be of the same kinds as the fish of the great sea, exceedingly many, but its swamps and marshes will not be healed. They will be given over to salt. Say salt. Remember that statement. Verse 12. Along the bank of the river, on this side and on that side, will grow all kinds of trees used for food. Their leaves will not wither and their fruit will not fail. They will bear fruit every month because their water flows from their sanctuary. Say, my water flows from the sanctuary. Say, my water flows from the sanctuary. Their fruits 
your fruit will be for food and their leaves for medicine. Are you guys with me? So we have the temple, which is the sanctuary. And out of the temple flows a river of living water known as the river of life. Say the river of life. And when this river entered the sea, its waters were healed. Are you still with me? Habakkuk chapter 2, 14. King James. When this river went into the sea, its waters were healed. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 14, King James. 1, 2, 3. Some people are getting it. The earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. As what? As the waters, as the waters, the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Are you guys with me? But now how, do, how does God show forth His glory? Yes, through His sons and His daughters. The Bible says this in the book of Romans chapter 9 verse 23. New King James, let me just bring you into remembrance again. And that He, God, might make known the riches of His glory on what? On the vessels of mercy. Say higher. A vessel of mercy. Which He had prepared beforehand for glory. Again the Bible says in the book of, first book of Peter chapter 1 verse 10, New King James. I want you guys to see this. First book of Peter chapter 1 verse 10, New King James. Of this salvation, the prophets have inquired and searched carefully, who prophesied of the grace, the, the, the prophets here speaking about the Ezekiels, the Daniels. Are you guys with me? The Jeremiahs, prophets of old, inquired and searched carefully, also prophesied of the grace, say grace, that would come to you. Amen. Carry on, listen to this. Searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ who was in them was indicating when He testified beforehand. So the Spirit of God was testifying, testifying, testifying about each and every one of you. When He was testifying beforehand the sufferings of Christ, meaning His crucifixion, and then after that, I, I don't know if you're hearing this. The prophets of old said that, listen, we have searched carefully of the salvation that we have seen spiritually by the Spirit of God. And we have prophesied many times of a salvation, a grace, and that would come. But we could never experience it. It was not meant for their time. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth His Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to come and redeem those who were under the law that we might receive the adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, so that I can manifest his glory here on this earth. Prophesied what? The sufferings of Christ. But after that, we see something else. It is not just the Christ that is to come, but we see a people, a remnant that will rise up in the fire and in the power of God. And those are known as the glories of God who would follow. As the waters cover the sea, so shall the knowledge of the glory of the Lord fill the earth. That will be done through you and I. Are you guys with me? And then the Bible says this in context of what I've just said. I love this passage of Scripture. Psalm chapter 46 verse 1, New King James. Psalm chapter 46 verse 1. Listen to this. God is our refuge and strength 
a very present help. Meaning, even now, here right now, is your help. A very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Even though the earth be removed, and though the mountains are carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled. Amen. I want you guys to catch something here. Though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling, and then it carries on. Listen to this. There is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God. I've just shown you the vision of the river flowing from the throne room. And it says it's coming through the sanctuary. Amen. And it says that there is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God. And then it carries on to explain what is the city of God. Listen to this. The holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. I wish I had more time to really just get into this. The holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. Tabernacle means dwelling place. Huh? What happened in the tabernacle? That's where God manifested His glory. Huh? But you are the tabernacle of God. And what happens in the tabernacle? That is where God manifests His glory. You are the tabernacle. What happens in the tabernacle? That is the place where God manifests His glory. You are the tabernacle. What happens in the tabernacle? That is the place where God manifests His glory. Which means that where I go, God will manifest His glory in and through my life. That makes me a stream that shall make glad this river of the city of God. So each and every one of us, we are a stream. And this river flows out of us. Together we form a river that cannot be stopped. A rushing river. Listen, it's not a normal river. It is a rushing river, meaning it is unstoppable. There is nothing that can stand in its way. It will come through like a wrecking ball and it will wreck everything, every plan, every device and every assignment of the enemy Satan. And that is why God said that on this revelation, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I pray that you will catch this thing tonight and will become a mindset and that you will manifest as I have spoken when I started the service, a manifestation of the very words being spoken in this night may not be taken lightly. It says, verse 5, God is in the midst of her. Aye. And she shall not be moved. What shall not be moved? Come on, say it. She. What is that? The bride of Christ. We're now speaking about the church. And it's saying that God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her. Just at the break of dawn. Are you guys with me? Huh? Come on, I've explained this before many a times. That when you get filled with the Holy Spirit, He becomes a river on the inside of you. That must flow out. Are you guys with me? Huh? Those who not only are filled with the Spirit of God, but also live and walk by the Spirit of the living God. Many are filled, but they do not walk nor live by the Spirit of the living God. So those who are not only filled, but who also walk and live by the Spirit of the living God, their fruits, their leaves, meaning their words, shall become like medicine to a dying and broken world. How does this happen, Pastor Martin? It is by the Spirit of God that you are filled with. When you open your mouth and you speak, rivers, Hey, listen, can I give you a key on how to send a river flowing? Can I show you? It's very easy. One simple step and the moment you do it, that river starts to flow. Can I show you? 
and the Reva Sheketere me Brandoska and the Reva Haravon de Ramayen de Ramasie, Ekeramasa Anadano, Laravo on de Rema Kerama Sheketerama, and Sayen de Ramasena Dano, and the Ravana Dama. Yet at a moment you start opening your mouth and you pray in unknown tongues, that river starts to flow. Bible says, praying in tongues is a sign for the unbeliever, not for believers. It's a sign for the unbeliever. Huh? Medicine to the soul it will bring healing, deliverance, restoration. Are you guys with me? Are we still together? I need to hurry up. No, time is good. I'm doing good. Now remember this. The voice of the Lord is upon many waters. Many waters. It's upon many waters. Okay, but now we get cursed water. And then there is sanctified water. Are you guys with me? How was water sanctified in the Old Testament? The priest would take the water. They didn't have purifying systems. So how would they purify water? Can I tell you how? They would hold it and say, this water is now purified. Go read it. They would speak and say the water is purified. This water is now purified. And guess what? Obviously, there was a lot of stuff thrown into it that would actually contaminate water. Ashes, scarlet, huh? from the offering, the sin offering, was thrown into the water. And then the priest would take and say, this water is now purified. Hmm? This water is purified. I'm going to take a sip. I imagine that we start doing that. Hear me spiritually. Hear me spiritually. Because now I can see this will also be taken out of context. Amen. Are you guys with me? Can I show you something? Okay. Ephesians chapter 5, 25, Amplified Classic. Husbands, love your wives. No, I'm not doing a wedding ceremony. As Christ loved the church and gave Himself up for her. Okay? Verse 26, So that He might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the Word. Verse 27, That He, why? Why must that happen? So that He might present the church to Himself in glorious splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such things, that she might be holy and faultless. Now I want to ask you, where is any of your deeds in any of this? Hello? Where is any of your deeds in this thing that I've just read? Say nowhere. Okay? So Jesus sanctified the church. He washed the church with the water of the Word. Say the water of the Word. So the, wa the water is the Word. Bear in mind everything we've just covered. So the water is the word that he might present the church holy and without blame. Are you guys with me? Without spots and without wrinkle. Are, are we together? Now, bearing that in mind, when we go to John chapter 17, King James, it says, sanctify them. Can you guys remember it? God said that he sanctified his bride. He sanctified the church by the washing of water of the word. Are you guys with me? Now here it says, John 17, verse 17, King James. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So if Ephesians chapter 5, he says that he has sanctified the church by the washing of water, by the word. But in John 7, he says, he sanctified them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Then it means the word of God is water. 
Water is the Word of God. Are you guys with me? Just quickly, now I need you to say, I'm going to run now. Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 25, King James. Ezekiel 36, 25, King James says, Then I will sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean. From all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. Verse 26, a new heart. Say a new heart. Say again, say new heart. Also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give you an heart of flesh, verse 27, and I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you shall keep my judgments and do them. Are we still together? Quickly run to Hebrews chapter 10, 22, Amplified Classic. I hope it's not too much. Hebrews 10, 20. To amplify classic, let us all come forward and draw near with true, honest, and sincere hearts in, I love this, unqualified assurance and absolute conviction engendered by faith, by that leaning of the entire human personality on God in absolute trust and confidence in His power, wisdom, and goodness, having our hearts sprinkled and purified from a guilty evil conscience and our bodies cleansed with pure water. Verse 23, so let us seize and hold fast and retain without wavering the hope we cherish and confess and our acknowledgement of it. For he who promised is reliable, sure and faithful to his word. Listen, you can with unqualified insurance and without any feeling of guilt, no matter what the enemy have tried to place upon you, I'm telling you this night, that you can with unqualified assurance, by the grace of the Almighty God, without any guilt, you can be convinced that God will do and keep His promises towards you. If you know that you've been sprinkled, washed by the water of the words, I need to get into this one, that, having said that. Go for me Isaiah 55, 10 King James, just quickly. I'm almost done. Not really, but. Listen to this. For as the rain comes down, what the? Which is? And snow, which is? From where? And returns not. Amen. Let me just make that easy because that's King James there. It's a bit heavy there. So, for as the rain comes down and the snow, so I'll just translate for you, comes down from heaven and returns not. Amen. But what does it do? It waters the earth and makes it, say it makes it, bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. And then we get to the all familiar verse 11. Go, verse 11. So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth, says God. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing where to I send it. So the word that is water, that, that is within me, say within me, will be prosperous to bring to fulfillment every promise. If you allow it, to keep on washing you. What's happening here tonight is you're being washed by the water of the Word. When we say the water of the Word, it is very specific in its essence and in its description. When I say by the water of the Word, it means Scripture being mixed with the Spirit of God makes it the water of the Word. It is not any water. It is the water of the Word, which means it is something mixed with the Spirit of God. It is His Word mixed with His Spirit. It is the water of the Word. Are you guys with me? How do I know that? Because the Spirit is also water. Huh? Hello? Menses. The Spirit is also Word. But also water. Hmm? So the Word is water, but now the Word is also Spirit. 
Can I have an amen? amen. Say the word is also spirit. Say the, say the word is water. The water is word. But now the spirit is also word. The word is also spirit. John 6, 63, New King James. Are we still together? Don't worry, I'm going somewhere. I think by now you should have caught the train of thoughts already of what I'm trying to say here. John 6, 63, New King James. And it says, It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirits and they are? So, the word is spirits. Amen. Go verse 68. But Simon Peter answered him. Simon Peter. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. So if the word is spirit and the word is water, then it means that the spirit is also water. Are you guys with me? Listen, in John chapter 4, we find Jesus speaking to a woman at the well. And he's asking for water. Again, a well. The well here represents... I think it was named the well of Jacob. That well. Which means it's the church. Thinking of it now. So he's meeting a where? This woman was in a very specific profession. And he's speaking to her and saying, give me a little water. And she says, I have no, nothing to draw the water with. And he says, if you only knew the gift being presented to you now, and that I can give you water, and that the water that I will give you, when you drink of this water, you will never thirst again. And she said, give me this water. Are you guys with me? And then Jesus said, the water that I give you shall become on the inside of you a well of living water springing up into eternal life. Are you guys with me? Now, in context of this, this again, when we get to the book of John chapter 7, verse 37 to 39, here we find Jesus, and it is on that great day of the feast, the last day of the great day of the feast. And Jesus then stood up and He cried with a loud voice, and he said that, listen, anyone who thirst, let him now come to me and drink the living word. Come to me and drink. Are you guys with me? What do you think happens when you open up this book? And you, but listen, the Bible says the letter kills. The Spirit gives life. So for this to become a well of living water means that I have to partake in it accompanied by the Spirit of the living God. Otherwise, it will be lettered, it will be law, it will kill, it will suppress, it will put you back under a bondage. But when I read this, by the leading and the guidance of the Spirit of the living God, it becomes a well filled with the water of life. Are you guys with me? And it will become on the inside of you a well, springing up, say springing up, into everlasting life. Are you guys with me? And he says, come to me and, and drink. For he who believes in me, as the scripture said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. And then in the very next verse, it says, and this he spoke concerning the Holy Spirit. Who those who believe in me will receive. For the Spirit was not yet given because Christ was not yet glorified. So who's the river of living water? That context of John chapter 7, 37 to 39 speaks about waters coming out of your heart, but he says, I'm speaking about the Spirit. So who's the Spirit then flowing out of my heart? The river flowing out of my heart. Come on, I want you guys just to catch this thing. It's so simple. Are you guys with me? But if you can catch it, it will change your life. Flows out of my heart like a rushing river of living water. Are you guys with me? But the Spirit was poured out. And you can now receive these rivers. And more than that, we can now become these rivers to a dying and broken world. Are you guys with me? Quickly go to Isaiah chapter 12, verse 2. I'm going to land the plane now. Just buckle up. You're coming in for a landing. 
por homem foi King James. Behold, God is my salvation. My what? Say, I am a well of living water. Okay. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid for the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also has become my salvation. Verse 3, listen to this. Therefore with joy shall we draw water out of the... Okay, not well, but plural wells of salvation. Hey, you are wells of salvation. And a dying and broken world should be able to see that upon you so that they come to you the wells of salvation, vessels of mercy, and draw water out of you so that they too can become like you. Are you guys with me? Verse 4. And in that day you shall say, Praise the Lord. Call upon His name. Declare His doings among the people. Meaning the nations, the Gentiles. You guys with me? Bear in mind, we're reading now out of the Old Testament here. Make mention that His name. Say His name. Is exalted. There's no doubt speaks about the Lord Jesus Christ. Huh? Philippians chapter 2. Verse 9 to 11, King James. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name. Highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in the earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess face that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Again, I state that passage of Scripture no doubt is speaking about the Lord Jesus Christ. Huh? It says, for those who come to Him and drink from Him shall become wells of salvation to the lost. But listen, I don't know if that does not excite you. Wells of salvation. Wells, you are sitting here as wells of salvation. Wells of salvation. Wells of salvation. Okay, let me, let me give you something else. Go for me to Luke chapter 19. I'm enjoying myself. Luke chapter 19 verse 41. New King James. You're going to love this one. Hmm? Now as he drew near, he saw the city and wept over it. 42 saying, if you had known even you, especially in this your day, the things that make for your peace, but now they are hidden from your... Verse 43, For days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment around you, surround you and close you in on every side, and level you and your children within you to the ground, and they will not leave you one stone upon another, not one stone upon another, because you did not know the time of your visitation. So Jesus is saying that, listen, because you did not know the time of your visitation, you will be broken down into pieces. You will have no peace. Are you guys with me? But what was the visitation supposed to be like? I'm going to show you. For that, we need to go back to the Old Testament again. Isaiah chapter 43, King James. Isaiah 43 verse 18. This is what that visitation should have been like. And this was a prophecy for Israel. But this is a prophecy going out for each and every one of you on this night. Are you guys with me? Can I go? Remember, hear not. Say remember. Remember when I spoke about remembrance? So I'm completing the circle. I'm coming back for the landing now. Amen. I hope that you can remember everything I've said. Remember, you're not the former things. Neither consider the things of old, meaning speaking about the law. Verse 19, Behold, I will do a... Wow, okay, so we are a new thing. Now it shall spring forth, shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Verse 20, The beasts of the field shall honor me and the dragons and the owls because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. Verse 25, I, even I, am he that blotteth out thy transgressions from my own sake and will not remember your sins. Verse 26, put me in remembrance 
Let us plead together. Declare thou that thou may be justified. We have just read in Ephesians chapter 5 and Hebrews chapter 10, we have read how he did it. He did it through the washing of water by the word. This is how he did this. Are you guys with me? And then here God says, I will do a new thing in your midst. I will turn your deserts, your desert lands. I will turn it into waters. I will turn it into rivers. Guy, listen, what is he saying? That God is saying that when I see a desert, I will make it a river. When I see a desert, drought will end. The moment that I see it. So this thing where people say, I go through this desert. Guess what? When God sees a desert, He immediately makes it a river. He immediately. Hmm? He explains what it all means. It means that I'm going to remove all of your sins. I'm going to take your transgressions and your inequities away from you. So would you put God in remembrance? That is the question. Huh? Would you put God in remembrance? Again, now we're speaking about communion. But you keep on taking the Holy Communion in remembrance that Jesus died so that we can have rivers and not deserts. So that you can have rivers and no desert. So that we can have rivers and no desert. Are you guys with me? That you can have forgiveness and not guilt. That you can have freedom and not bondage. That you can have grace and not law. Will you bring it into remembrance? And so they did not know the time of their visitation. But what about the ones who did know and who did take part of the visitation? What about those? Glad that you're asking. Psalm chapter 65 verse 9. Amplified classic. <laughs> you visit the earth and saturate it with you greatly enrich it. The river of God is full. <laughs> ah, full of those who are saved, in other words. The river of God is full of water. It is full of those who are saved. You provide them with grain when you have so prepared the earth. You water the fields, furrows abundantly. You settle the ridges of it. You make the soil soft with showers, blessing the sprouting of its vegetation. Verse 11. You crown the year with your bounty and goodness, and the tracks of your chariot wheels drip with fatness. This is speaking about the anointing. Verse 12. The luxuriant, I love this. Pastures in the uncultivated country drip with moisture, and the hills girt themselves with joy. Verse 13. The meadows are clothed with flocks. The valleys also are clothed with grain. They shout for joy and sing together. When God visits a place, there is water. And water speaks about abundance. But then it also speaks about the anointing. So we can put all of this in one word. And that is known as the anointing. Please understand that the moment the anointing hits you, there will be abundance of blessings. There will be an abundance of multiplication. Listen, there will be blessing upon blessing. Blessing up when the anointing hits you like a flood. I'm telling you that there will be blessing upon blessing. Why? When God sees a desert, He changes it into water. So whatever desert you are facing, I'm telling you that there's a river that is about to come. There's a river of abundance. Did Jesus Christ not say that I have come that they may have life and that they have my, may have it more abundantly? Meaning that every part of my life should be in overflow. Okay. Let me, let me close off with this. I have to close off. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> let me close off with this. I'm just going to paraphrase because of time. So I've got pages of scripture, you see. John chapter 5, okay, and John chapter 9 talks about two pools. John chapter 5 speaks about the pool of Bethesda. And there was a man sick for 39 years. And Jesus, the living word, came on the scene. So there's the pool of Bethesda. So what would happen there is an angel would come every day in its time, stir the water, say stir the water. Yeah. 
and then the first one into the water will be healed. Okay. So this man is then, here comes the living water. And he says, do you want to be healed? And the man is not perceiving who is speaking to say, explain the whole story, but you know, every time the angel comes, thirst the water, everyone gets in front, there's no one to help me in. And then Jesus said, stand up, take your bed and walk. And he purified the water. He said, he said, he said, by the breath of God, take up your bed and walk. And guess what? The water was purified. And the man got up and he walked out of, are you guys with me? Amen. Then there was another pool. And here we find a blind man. Are you guys with me? This is in John chapter 9 for those taking notes. Here we find a blind man. This is where Jesus spat on the ground and he took the mud and he placed it on this guy's eyes. Are you guys with me? And then he said, he didn't stop there. The man wasn't healed there. And he said to him, go and wash your eyes in the pools of Siloam. And when he did so, the man was healed and his sight was restored. You guys with me? So these pools were dedicated for ages to manifest the medical working power of God. I'm going to say that again. These pools, can you wake up? These pools were dedicated to manifest the healing power of an almighty God. They were dedicated to manifest the meaning every time someone went in and got healed, God got the glory. It was dedicated to manifest the healing power of the Almighty God. But you have become pools filled with the living water to manifest the healing power of the living God. Not just physically, but also spiritually. Are you guys with me? Healing those caught up in bondages, curses, to bring restoration and healing even to the soul. I'm not just speaking about physical healing here. You are pools filled with living water. But how many of you understand that that pool must be stirred? Are you guys with me? Second Kings chapter 2, Amplified Classic. I think this is the last verse. Passage of Scripture. Almost done. Two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes. Second Kings chapter 2 verse 19. Amplified Classic. And the men of the city said to Elisha, yeah, this is the last one. Behold, inhabiting of this city is pleasant. In other words, listen, this is a good city. As my Lord sees. But the water is bad and the locality causes miscarriage and barrenness. It says in all animals, but other translation says in everyone. Are you guys with me? Verse 20, listen to this. He said, bring me a what? Wait, wait, you read it so casually. I? I knew. Ball. And put salt. Now what is the salt? The symbol of God's purifying power in it. And they brought it to him. Verse 21. Then Elisha went to the spring of waters and cast the salt in it and said, Thus says the Lord. So God is speaking now saying, I, not the salt, have healed these waters. <laughs> there shall not be any more death, miscarriage or barrenness and bereavement because of it. So he took something that symbolizes what God's power and glory is all about and he placed it in contaminated, cursed of water and God, not the salt, healed it. Are you guys with me? But now does the Bible not say that you are the salt of the earth? That you are the light of the world? Now please understand that God would never despise he will never despise, but He would honor any symbol that reflects and shows, that indicates, that speaks what His power and glory is all about. I'm going to say that again. God will always honor any symbol that shows what His power and glory is all about. You are a symbol of God's power. You are a symbol of God's glory. You are a symbol of His anointing. You are a symbol of His fire, of His life. Are you guys with me? Sent into a dying and broken world. And as the waters came into the sea, its waters were healed and brought forth life. And so God, not the salt. Brought forth the healing. 
purified the cursed water and those who were lost are now saved by the God that is within you, upon you, around you, actively at work through you. Do you believe it? That is the question. Are you guys with me? So this is it. What do we have? We have the Spirit of God. <clears throat> Everything in a nutshell. I could have just said this. We have the Spirit of God moving upon the face of the waters. We have the voice of the Lord on many waters. We have the voice of the Lord sounding like many waters. Then we have contention and enmity water. The lost. Amen. Then we have peace water. Where room was made. We have place water. Water of purification. We have water that brings healing and joy. We have water that brings forth abundance. Then we have the word that is truth, that is water. Then we have the spirit that is also water. Are you guys with me? Then we had Moses who cast the tree into the bitter water and was made sweet. We had the pool of Bethesda. We had the pool of Siloam. And both brought healing to manifest the healing power of the living God. And then we have the woman at the wall. The water shall be in you, a wall springing up into eternal life. Then we have desert lands being turned into water. We have Elisha turning bad water into fruitful water by placing salt in a new bowl. In a new bowl and casting it into the waters. And then he said, Let these waters be healed. Are you guys with me? I say again, God will always honor a symbol that manifests what His power and His glory is all about. You must become that well and that pool filled with living water that others can continually drink from. You must be the salt of the earth. You must be living water. Go and change bitter water into sweet, sweet water. Go and be an overflowing blessing. Go and bring forth healing and joy. Go and remove contention and enmity by bringing peace. How do I do this? You have become a well filled with living water, springing up into eternal life. You are filled with the Holy Spirit from within, upon and around. You are filled with God's light. You are filled with God's truth. You are filled with God's glory. You are filled with God's power. You have the ability of God inside of you. You have Christ in your heart. You have His love inside of you. You are one with Christ. You have become and therefore should be an expression of Him to this dying and broken world. Where you go, rivers must go forth, bringing healing, deliverance, breakthrough, rest, hope, restoration, life, joy, light, and peace. This is the mandate. This is the commission. Go, 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 go. I'm telling you that you have everything on the inside of you that you need to go and fulfill this great commission. You are pools dedicated to manifest the power and the glory of the Almighty God. You are vows of living water spring up into everlasting life. Let them come to you and let them drink freely and so receive salvation. This is the mandate. And once you have done that, you make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Come on, say, I take up this call. I take up this purpose. I take up this mandate. I take up this commission. Say, it is mine. Say, here I am, Lord. Use me, send me, fill me, show me, empower me, activate me, help me, guide me, and lead me by your spirits to fulfill your commission here in this world. Come on, give God a praise offering. Yeah. 
standing like this I just want everyone just to close their eyes and I want everyone just to pray this prayer after me I'm not going to make a specific altar call right now but I want everyone nonetheless just, just pray this prayer after me saying Holy Father say, say this say I confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of the Living God Everyone online, you can repeat this after me. If you've never given your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ, just pray this prayer. And say, I believe with all my heart that He died on a cross for all my sins. Father, I receive your freedom, your forgiveness. Thank you for your forgiveness. I receive it in full measure here right now. I receive your call and your purpose for my life. Lord, I love you. I worship you and I dedicate my life in serving you. Thank you for your blood that was shed for me. I give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise in the name of Jesus. Amen. Come on, let's just give God a praise offering. Amen. I hope and I trust that you received something out of that. And um, go and be that. Believe that that is who you are. And be that to this world. Amen. Thank you, Encounter. We love you and stay connected. If you would like to give into this ministry, we have made giving your tithes, seed, or offering as simple and effortless as possible. You can simply log on to EncounterChurch.co.za or LeonDupria.com.